I would like to congratulate the organizers for having this much needed discussion and I think that uh, Seema ji is a perfect choice for representing the voices because uh, many of us might get carried away and if I do get carried away please feel free to stop me in the middle. I want to point out a few things in a very pointed way. Um, when the gentleman before me said that the army is there to sort of combat and otherwise we would be perceived as people shipping, you know, sort of wearing saris. Uh, the, women, the feminist in me cringed a little. But then, uh, then we also have to thank him to bring out that perspective. Because if we don't understand the very composition of the army, the, it's not only that there is APSPA, there is Armed Forces Special Powers Act. The army itself is a very hierarchical institution and as you rightly pointed out, they have been trained to kill and they have been trained to battle the combatants as if they are in an enemy area. Now, uh, we have to press for a political resolution of Kashmir. I am jumping to this because I don't want to get carried away in the details. This, uh, the devil is in the details as they say. But we have to argue for a political resolution of Kashmir right now much more than ever before. Otherwise, we will never be able to reach the, we'll never be able to reach the core of the problem and we will always keep debating in these terms of army versus militant, Burhan Mani versus someone else. This is not the core of the problem. There are so many Burhan Manis who have been killed and there are so many of such protests which have happened and which will keep happening if this issue is not resolved. And the issue has to be demilitarized first of all. When I say the issue has to be demilitarized, what we mean is that it, we have to stop looking at Kashmir as a problem of terrorism and we have to stop looking at Kashmir as a problem of army versus the people. It's not army versus the people. Army acts on the orders of the civilian government. And the record in Kashmir of all the governments which have you know, uh, taken power at the centre so far is the same. It is perceived as enemy territory. The, and when I say territory, I use the word very carefully because that is the word that is used. We never hear of the people, we only hear of the territory. And we hear it in their slogans, we hear it in their declarations. This zone, this Kashmir, the Jammu and Kashmir region is being used by both India and Pakistan as a buffer zone. That is what it is. It's nothing else. The people in there don't matter. BJP has said it on more than one occasion that we will replace the entire population. We'll settle all the army generals there and we'll settle, you know, we'll have an inverted population demographic. And those attempts are underway right now. Article 370 will be raked up again and again, uh, especially before the UP election. And these things will do permanent damage. We have to understand, uh, the next point that I want to mention is that we have to understand that the uh, struggle in Kashmir is a non-violent one and you know contrary to what the media tell us and contrary what to you know to what the uh, you know BJP tells us if we take examples of how the current protests were handled there's one area called Pans Chok. Pans Chok mein uh, police ne jo hai, police ne ek different operation apnaya. Jab wahan pe log protest karne ke liye bahar aaye, the police did not come outside. The police did not come out on the streets and they did not go there to shoot. And nothing happened. Nothing happened basically. Now, the videos that are coming out, we see people protesting in civilian areas. Even if they are, you know, even if they are holding prayers and all of that, it's, it's a completely peaceful situation. And the CRPF comes in and they, you know, they, they are seen stepping on the janamas and they are seen displacing people, they are seen shooting people on the street. I mean, why do you need the army in the civilian areas? Are the people going to blow themselves up? With stones probably, which won't even explode? What are they going to do? Are they going to have a nuclear attack in the middle of Khanyar? Probably not. We don't need the army there and there needs to be a demilitarization of the issue and the governments need to be held responsible for not resolving this issue. I have much more to say but I don't want to hijack the entire space. Uh, just one, uh, I would like to briefly, very briefly respond, even there I will not go into the details. Uh, one of our friends here, uh, you know, he expressed a uh, genuine concern that the left overall is I will not go into XYZ person or ABC person who was silent and who was not silent. I think that collectively, I mean all the progressive liberal people right now need to come forward and uh, Seema is absolutely right. I mean the left has so many hang ups and has been terrorized so much. There is this whole situation of McCarthyism where everyone is afraid to speak. Umar Khalid says something about Burhan Wani and it becomes national news. They don't, the media don't, 
care about what is happening in Kashmir and they focus on what Burhan Wani is saying. Kanaya says that army rapes in Kashmir and that becomes the national news and you know then the discussion shuts off. I think that the way, I mean this, right now we have a situation of McCarthyism and Islamophobia and anti-Kashmir sentiment all rolled into one. And in that I think that you know spaces like these and wo liberal voices, these need to come forward because they don't have this whole hang up. For example when we called a march on Kashmir, they were, the, the left organizations on campus started bringing posters against us. Why don't you condemn terrorism? Why don't you condemn? Of course we condemn terrorism, but there has to be a terrorist act first. Terrorism is not an identity, terrorism is an act. But in that if we see Burhan Wani for example, I mean this issue is, there is an attempt to reduce the whole issue to Burhan Wani and there the discussion shuts off. He's an easy case. Burhan Wani never attacked anyone, Burhan Wani never killed anyone, never did a bomb attack, never did anything. But the Indian, the Indian state created him, the Indian state by shooting him in a fake encounter and I say fake encounter because he did not actually shoot, even when he was killed he did not shoot. And the Indian state has created a terrorist out of him and we have seen how Indian state can create a terrorist out of people like Kanaya, people like Umar, that is something we have seen right in front of our eyes. So the challenge there is for, I, and, uh, I mean I, I, I would still repose my face, I mean given whatever shortcomings are there on part of everyone to not speak about Kashmir, I would still repose my faith in spaces like these and in people like these to speak up and to speak up in an uncomplicated manner. This is an issue of civilian killings, this is an issue of political resolution of Kashmir and that has to be, I mean that somehow has to be foregrounded. The last, the very last thing that I want to say is that right now I see a hope, I see a certain kind of receptivity among the people in India to hear about Kashmir and to talk about Kashmir. Earlier this wasn't there. Somehow, I mean, even people, uh, I had written a post uh, saying, you know, forget Burhan Mani, what did the Indian state do to Sheikh Abdullah? And that post was shared by many people who would even say, who were even abusing Kashmiris. They were abusing Kashmiris, you know, let them go to hell, let them go to Pakistan, wherever, etc., etc. But even they were sharing that post because somewhere this realization has crept in that our governments, who we criticize on every issue, on corruption, on safety of women, on uh, communalism, etc., 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 how do we trust those exact same governments when it comes to Kashmir? You know the Congress government can have, it can create riots, the uh, Congress government can have corruption to its credit, it can have uh, not ensuring safety of women to its credit. But when it comes to Kashmir, how can we trust the same Congress government? This realization somehow is creeping in. And people in the country are, they are irritated somehow right now. You know with this, they are not able to make sense of this whole thing. 2003 this happens, 2005, 2008, whatever. This keeps happening and there seems to be no end to this cycle of violence. And I think that this is, a, this is a very opportune moment when in India we can have discussions on this and there can be more informed debate because people have seen what the character of the state is thanks to the BJP government coming in power, thanks to Modi coming in power. The people at large have seen what the state is capable of, the manipulations and the machinations that the state is capable of and that's where I think the space for dialogue is people right now are ready to know, they want to know for their own sake, for their own mental peace, they want to know what is happening in Kashmir and how we can put an end to this. And uh, with that I would again congratulate uh, uh, Jama Collective for holding this discussion and uh, uh, I, I feel, I mean because I, I, I am an activist primarily, I feel that we need to come out of these closed door meetings of probably after building a consensus and we need to have marches in this, on the streets of Delhi right now. We, we did want to have, uh, we had a protest in Jantar Mantar right this now. This is the main thing, Yeah, is. yeah. We had a protest at Jantar Mantar, but before that, the SHO calls me and says, Aapka protest anti-India, anti-army hai, isko aap cancel kar dijay. And then I spoke to him, and then he was convinced, and then he says, okay, fine, you at least give me an undertaking. So I said, no, I will not give an undertaking, because we protest on every issue from educational policy to nuclear weapons to... Uh, Kashmir, why should I give you an undertaking only on the issue of Kashmir, that is discriminatory. And then he doesn't have an answer to that and then finally the ACP and additional DCP, everyone called me and finally somehow we were able to have the protest. There will be difficulties, yes, they are not allowing uh, Engineer Rashid's protest in Jantar Mantra was cancelled, but I think that we can try again and let's frame the issue in terms of, you know, civilian killings and asking for a political resolution. I think that that is the proper line from my perspective to be taken because political resolution does not just mean plebiscite. Plebiscite is a very narrow option. It means India or Pakistan but if you 
go to the people actually if you see the dominant sentiment it's neither for india it's not for pakistan it's probably for an independent jammu and kashmir but having said that this is just my opinion we have to go for a process of self determination in which everyone will be consulted be it people from jammu or ladakh kashmiri pandits or sikhs or muslim doesn't matter everyone will be heard only when there is a process of self determination and that is something we need to push for and you know probably that's how we can build a consensus on kashmir i think yours i'll just uh, uh, the points made by the second uh, person i think uh, you know what you're saying is literally in its limbo in limbo as to why is the rest of india not bothered because there is a consensus in the rest of india and it is a national consensus that was uh, created over the last 70 years that kashmir is ours and it's not going anywhere and that is one of the reasons why you have to unravel that or you have to understand or you have to move into that through persuasion but it cannot be done over uh, overnight and there is a resistance because you have political forces feeding into that national consensus with by creating stereotypes by creating myths by creating lies and distortions so you are reinforcing constantly that consensus earlier maybe out of idealism that it's a new nation it's going to give place to a muslim majority state it is going to march together with the idealism slowly being taken over up and over by the years through successive parties you can't just blame the bjp you have to blame the other political parties as well where they unravel that national uh, that idealism for the kashmiris and also for those who were supporting that consensus and then brought in lies and subterfuge and machinations to create a new narrative whereby um, uh, the same thing continues that now it is our uh, 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 you know i mean the same thing shaila is of course a particularly favorite leader of mine so i'm going to spend a little time in what you said you know when engineer rashid came over here he he met me and just after me apparently went to a senior regional party leader from mainstream upper north very senior leader uh and that leader called me while engineer rashid was sitting there and just before he came to meet me uh, a, a few hours before there was security and he was traveling with the cops and you know they want and he had to travel in their car so that they knew where he was going and this gentleman who's a friend uh also we know him for years he rang me up and he said ha to ye engineer rashid mere sath baithe hain तो मैं तो इनसे कह रहा हूँ कि एक एंड दिस इज अ पार्टी व्हिच इज सपोजेडली स्ट्रांगली एंटी बीजेपी एंड यू वुड से वुड बी फॉर कश्मीर एंड इसे मैं तो इनसे कह रहा हूँ कि कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ऑफ इंडिया पे लिख दें कि हम कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ऑफ इंडिया के साथ हैं एक उस वैसा स्टेटमेंट दे दें तो बस ठीक है हो जाएगा सब बात दैट इज वेन योर कश्मीर इज बर्निंग सो यू यू नो वॉट वुड है इंजीनियर रशीद इफ एनी सच स्टेटमेंट केम फ्रॉम हेम बट दिस इज द लेवल ऑफ अंडरस्टैंडिंग that we have for kashmir so when you talk of a political resolution whatever that resolution is i'm not even going there but there is no political class and system or outside kashmir which is even close to looking on kashmir as a uh, as a solution so every time you make a strategic move where you try to create a level playing field so that when there is a resolution the stakeholders are heard and justice is given it collapses and it has collapsed in a manner now which is far more dangerous and probably none of us are able to understand how serious it is because you have uh, i mean i'm sure you do because you are on the streets all the time but many of us here probably don't that the bjp has a very clear cut agenda which it has never lied about and like the congress the congress when it was trying to implement an agenda was confused and all over the place and not really knowing where it's going and creating complete chaos and in the process allowing communal forces of all kinds to raise their heads i mean wahhabism came into kashmir through that also uh, jammu communalism grew because of that because of the inability of the congress to stand up against it but the bjp has been very to be fair to the rss and the bjp they're very clear on their agenda for kashmir they've never diluted it they just shut up about it they are following that agenda completely to the letter right now and there is not any political resistance the resistance it's only the people of kashmir who are out on the roads on the streets fighting and there are dangers there 
because it's a leaderless i mean regardless of i agree with you completely regardless of what this media is saying constantly that those kashmiris are uh, you know with pakistan or they're with militants i mean for one month you've had this protests which have been completely peaceful except for ikka dukka violence thousands have been on the roads and if they have not been resisted they have passed that all the protests in the districts and towns of kashmir have passed peacefully they come out they raise their slogans they go back home that's been the pattern but thousands are now more and more women have joined them little boys and girls have joined them everybody is on the roads i was told from kashmir that not a single mohalla or locality is not involved in the protest today look at the danger of that you don't have leaders when will it will it turn violent literally really violent they are already being made violent they are not violent at the moment they are completely peaceful they are spontaneous pakistan's always been a factor it has not increased its presence in kashmir at all so we are really at a level where all that you have hoped for is going to be completely smashed and the plan is to keep kashmir as territory but keep it no matter what that has to be resisted rss is moving to a plan it knows where it's going the rest of us do not and that is the problem.